Dance has gained popularity in American society and all around the world. If you simply search for the word dance on YouTube, you will find 116 million results. You can relive some of the most amazing pop culture dance phenomena of the decade on YouTube. Perhaps you saw the 20,000 member flash mob that began Oprah Winfrey's 2009 television season. Or what about the 1,500 prison inmates who performed a dance to Michael Jackson's thriller in the Philippines? This surge in popularity has happened in conjunction with, and perhaps in reaction to, the numerous dance-related TV shows that have dominated television ratings for the last seven years. Through media coverage, humanity has witnessed the therapeutic benefits of dance. We see that dance is a creative force that has the potential to change and improve our bodies, our moods, and ultimately our lives. In many episodes of these popular dance shows, celebrities' histories are presented with special emphasis on the therapeutic value of dance in assisting them through their life struggles. Many of you assume these programs are showing dance therapy. Currently, the word therapy is used to refer to anything that makes us feel better. How many of you can relate to retail therapy? <laughs> Chocolate therapy? Yeah. Or pet therapy? But feeling better from dance is not the same thing as dance movement therapy. So how can we differentiate dancers who utilize the innate therapeutic power of dance and dance movement therapy? All dancers and dance movement therapists work along the continuum of dance approaches. Dance artists are trained to use dance for art, education, recreation, and entertainment. Well, with this in mind, how do dance artists respond when the body-mind connection uncovers issues and emotions from the people with whom they're working? A dance student who worked for many years, well, approximately four years, with women suffering from domestic violence, stated, I am on a thin line between therapy and community-based work. Sometimes I really don't know how to react because I do not believe that everything in this process needs to operate on the level of therapy. So how can I establish my role as a facilitator and not therapist? Or does this mean that I need to go back to school to study for a master's degree in therapy. Her thesis advisor asked this dance student, how can you help people in this work if you don't have the skills of a therapist? And are you putting your clients or your dance students in danger with activities that bring forward their emotions and their feelings? Think about that. This very dilemma is the same one that dance artists faced in the 1940s. In order to ensure safe and ethical practice for the people with whom they were working, they sought further education, which resulted in the development of graduate degree programs in dance movement therapy. They created a national organization, the American Dance Therapy Association, and a dance therapy certification board. Dance movement therapists are the only dancers trained to do therapy. They use dance and movement to foster health, communication, and expression, promote the integration of physical, emotional, cognitive, and social functioning, enhance self-awareness, and facilitate change. They are professionals with years of training and clinical supervision to responsibly handle almost any biopsychosocial situation that may surface during the dance making and dance creation process. If a situation evolves where a patient is triggered by a traumatic memory 
or perhaps by a recent loss of sensory motor functioning secondary to their disease, the dance movement therapist knows not only how to assist the patient to cope with his or her distress, but uses what surfaces in therapeutic intervention. What may start as a problem becomes a new possibility. Let me give you a, a personal example. During a dance movement therapy session that I was leading with a group of patients living with Parkinson's disease and chronic pain problems, one of the women fell during the group. I immediately reframed the negative experience by turning the patient's fall into a personal, not group dance. I went to her side, assessed her situation, realizing that she was not physically hurt, and I plopped down beside her on the floor, and we moved together on this level. Our scooting became very relational as we moved along the floor, and we ended up creating a highly energetic and physically strong contact improvisation. My spontaneous response and dance intervention provided compassionate relational opportunity for the patient to successfully address her loss of physical balance, which is part of the disease. It equally allowed her opportunity to face her fear in falling, her lack of self-trust, anger, and social embarrassment that accompanied the fall. The progression of this dance opportunity was then later verbally discussed not only with the patient, but it included a generalization to all of the group's coping strategies. If my role, however, was a dance teacher, I would assist the patient up from the floor and return the group's attention to the previous movement instruction. There is a difference, you see, between a dance teacher's directive approach and the student's receptive response and the facilitation by a dance movement therapist who develops a reciprocal movement relationship with their patient through a dynamic assessment and intervention. Dance movement therapists are trained to clinically intervene using the patient's personal movement repertoire. A board certified dance movement therapist does not direct the patient how to move. Unscripted dance and movement are the dance movement therapist assessment and intervention tools for addressing the patient's individual health objectives, which include but may not be limited to things as expanding the range and quality of movement, increasing and channeling energy, fostering feeling identification and affect regulation, and reducing anxiety and depression. The dance movement therapist compassionately assists the patient client with his or her health objectives in addition to providing the aesthetic, the educational, the recreational, social, and therapeutic dance experience. Dance movement therapists are capable of safely and ethically dancing with all people who have mental and physical disease in their lives. Dance movement therapists have a psychotherapeutic approach that integrates the physical, emotional, cognitive, social, and spiritual aspects of an individual. Dance movement therapists have high standards of education, at minimum a master's degree, they have 3,640 hours of supervised clinical practice and board certification. They are trained in normal biopsychosocial development and biopsychosocial pathology. It is through knowing the patient's whole story where his or her authentic dance can be assessed and healing begins. Unlike some of these dance competition TV shows, no movement or dance is wrong in a dance movement therapy session, well, unless it's harmful. All authentic movement and dances are truly honored. 
patients leave a dance movement therapy session with a sense of empowerment, having creatively transformed their biopsychosocial struggles into winning opportunities. Thank you. Thank you.